Hi, this is Jan from Let's Build Shopify. Finally back with another video and I hope you all had a great Christmas season. And today I want to introduce you to a new series on this channel where I will give you something like 10 to 15 minutes of introduction to the most fundamental technologies used in Shopify and web development in general. And just to give you an idea what these are going to be, we will start with, let's say, HTML, CSS and JavaScript. But then we will quickly move forward to technologies like, let's say, SAS, Liquid, maybe even Git and Node, uh, Slate. And maybe you've already heard about some of these. Um, but I'm starting this because recently a lot of the questions I got could be answered in these videos. And they will also greatly help to get a better understanding of the big picture. And I think the best way to start this is by getting another coffee. And then we will have a look at HTML. All right, starting with HTML, I think it's safe to say that HTML is the single most used technology across the web and makes up basically every modern website. But you will also find HTML most likely coming along with CSS and JavaScript. So I think we have to put these three into perspective first. And I found this analogy where HTML is related to the structure of your house. So you can imagine it to be the fundamental building blocks or the fundamental elements of your website. And then CSS comes into play and adds some styling rules. But actually CSS goes a little bit beyond that because you can also position elements with CSS or you could define how these elements react to different screen sizes. And finally, we have JavaScript that adds another layer of functionality and interactivity to your website. So here it's related to the electricity and the heating system of your house. And just in case this is a little bit too abstract, here we have another good one at htmlcssjs.com where we have this little dude. And you can see that he's made up in HTML. So we have a body, two eyes and a mouth. So these are the fundamental building blocks. But it makes way more sense when CSS is introduced. So now the body gets rounded, we get a nice border to it. The elements are positioned towards the center and the eyes get aligned. And these are all things you can do with CSS. And finally, we add some JavaScript and now we can react to click events, maybe to button clicks. We can manipulate these elements and add new functionalities, maybe even have some kind of gravity. And we don't even need to reload the page. And I hope this gives a better understanding how these three technologies work together and come or, or interact with each other. All right, so before we will see how HTML comes into play with Shopify, um, let's get our hands dirty and write some HTML on our own. And therefore you could open any folder at your local machine. And in here, I will create a new text document or text file. And then I will remove the name and the file name extension.txt. And instead we could name it, let's say index.html. The name doesn't really matter, but it's important to have the file name extension.html. Enter. Uh, yes, we want to change the file format. And now you can see it already suggests to open this file with a web browser. So for me, this is Chrome, but you could basically use any web browser, let's say Firefox or Internet Explorer. Okay, let's say any modern web browser. Not sure if Internet Explorer counts into them, but that's another discussion. Uh, anyways, for now, we are going to open this with a text editor. And you could use any text editor, maybe even the Windows Notepad. But I will stick to Visual Studio Code because I think this is industry standard right now. And it comes with some great syntax highlighting and other features that you can just leverage to speed up your development workflow. So this is the text editor of my choice. Okay, so the very first thing we are going to add to this file is the definition of the doc type. And we can simply write doc type HTML. So this helps the browser to identify what he has to deal with. And now we are going to write our very first HTML tag. And coincidentally, it's also named HTML. So I will type HTML. And you can see that these HTML tags always come in two parts. We have this opening tag with the elements name. And down below, we have a closing tag indicated through this forward slash that marks the end of this element. And in between, we will have the elements content and you can even have further HTML tags inside that HTML tag so you can nest them. And in here, we will add the head and the body tag. And now you can see as I'm typing this, Visual Studio Code 
is always auto-generating these closing tags for me. And I have some um, highlighting for matching tags. So these are exactly the features I mentioned to speed up and um, yeah, simplify the development process. And what we are left with now is the basic structure of almost every HTML file. We have the head. This will contain some meta information on the page. And then we have the body, which will contain the um, page content. So now we will go ahead and add some actual content to the body and the head. And by the way, this head is not to be confused with the page header. So the page header contains uh, your store navigation and maybe this little card icon. Um, so it's part of the page content, but the head only contains meta information for your page. So for example, we could have a meta tag for the character set. Maybe it would be UTF-8. And then we could have a title tag. So this will be the name of the browser window tab. So you could say first steps in HTML. And now we will add some content to the body. So the actual page content. And for now we could just add an H1 tag, which stands for heading level one. And the content should be, let's say, hello world. That's a pretty standard example. And now we will save this. And now we can go ahead and actually open this file with a web browser. And then you would see the first steps in HTML is the page title and hello world is your very first HTML output to the page. Okay, what's next? So in order to get the most value out of this video, I think I should show you the top eight or the most used HTML tags that you would see all the time. And then we can transition to Shopify and see all that in action. So let's go. Coming in at number one, we have the headline tag. And actually you just saw the heading level one, but there are six different. So let me type this out. Um, let's say, hello, I'm a heading level X. And you would see that we have six different headlines coming at various sizes. Number two, the paragraph and line break. Um, so the paragraph just contains some regular text, could be anything, maybe a product description. So let's type, hello, I'm a text. And I want you to note that this paragraph doesn't support or doesn't recognize any line breaks per default. So whenever you want to have a line break, you would add a break line tag and then this line break gets applied. And you can also see that this break line tag doesn't have a closing tag because it doesn't contain any content anyways. Number three, the anchor tag. You could also call this a link. So let's say, hello, I'm a link. And then you would also need to provide an HTML attribute. And we haven't talked about these yet. You would add them to the opening tag. So now I will add an href attribute and we could simply type maybe HTTPS, double forward slash, and then google.com. And once I click on this link, I will be redirected to Google. And yeah, that's it for the A tag. On number four, we have unordered lists and list items. So we would have one unordered list element to wrap up multiple list items. And let's say we have four list items. Let's say, hello, I'm list item X. And then you would see we get this list style element. And the list items don't have to be plain text. They could be more complex or maybe images. So maybe your product uh, collection page is made up of a list or your Store navigation is made up of multiple links in an unordered list. Uh, who knows? At number five, we have the image tag. And the image tag is self-closing because it doesn't contain any content except the image. And we would need to define the source attribute within the tag. So now I will go for a placeholder image, HTTPS, double forward slash, laurenpixel.com slash 200 by 200 maybe category sports and then they would give me this placeholder image and you could also define the width and height right in this tag so let's do height 100 pixel and you would see this image gets smaller uh, but usually you you would define the height and width through css and not in this image tag yeah but that's it for now coming in at number six we have the html button so we are moving towards user input and let's say the button text is click me and you would see here is our button, but nothing happens whenever I click this. 
And therefore I would define the onClick attribute. And in here we can execute JavaScript code. So this is not native HTML, but for now, let's say alert, hello. And once this button is clicked, you could see this little message. Um, yeah, but I think we will cover that when we talk about JavaScript. So talking about user inputs, we are coming to number seven, the default input element. And this is self-closing as well. And we can have different types of user input. So you would define the type. And let's say we copy this three times. Then the first one could be of type text. And the second one of type checkbox. And maybe the third one even of type file. And you can see that these inputs get rendered differently. So here we can enter some text. Here we have the checkbox. And here I can select any file. And you can also add a placeholder value. Let's say the first text is the username. And then the gray text would indicate what this text field is for. Um, I will not cover the evaluation of these fields right now. But if you're interested in that, you could check on my video for custom product templates. So for products with custom user input. And you would see how this works. Last but not least, I want to show you the div tag. And the div tag is mainly used to group elements in a container and then apply some stylings. So for example, you could have a heading level one, the product title, and then you would have some text, maybe the product description. And down below, you could have another section, let's say the recommended products. And this is put out to the page. And once I inspect this, you can see that these two elements are grouped in a container. This is the div. And the other section is just down below. Uh, but I think we will get more into this when we come to CSS. And I just wanted to show you this so you don't get confused because in your theme files, you will see this all the time. All right, so now we want to see this whole concept of HTML in action. And therefore I'm at one of my development stores. And let's say I want to edit the product description for any product, maybe this good old clay plant pot. And you can see we have this text field for the product description. And actually this generates some HTML for us. So I could show this HTML and you would see we have a paragraph tag with the text inside. And maybe I can add some other text and maybe even some line breaks. Then you would see we get these break line tags inserted. And I could add an image. Let's pick this one maybe. And then you would see they throw in an image tag with the source of this image. And what I've might look pretty cryptic to you before is now way easier to read. And I get, well, I think you can understand this by now. And this will help to reverse engineer if something breaks or the formatting doesn't match. And this is the first example. And the second place where we will have lots and lots of HTML is within our theme files. So let's go to the live theme and then actions, edit code. And this should bring up the Shopify theme file editor. And let's open the theme.liquid. And this file is pretty much the starting point for your theme. You could see they define the document type HTML, just like we did. And then we have the HTML tag, followed by the head with some meta information. And at some point, the head will close. And then the body starts. And in here, you can see they have a lot of uh, divs, so container for different things. And one of the containers is even called page container. So I think this will define the page width. And then we have, well, it gets a little bit tricky because we have this placeholder content for layout because your Shopify store is not a single page. And this gets replaced with whatever page you're just visiting. So let's say you visit the product page, then the content of the file, let's say product template is loaded. And in here we have even more HTML. And for example, we could search for the product title. And you would see that the product title is put out into an H1 tag, so a heading. And the product description, let's search for that. You could see the product description is put out to a container that is just called product single description. And as we just saw before, the product description itself is also just HTML. This is just put out to this container. And I hope this all makes a little bit more sense for you now. And then I will bring this video to an end. And as always, I hope you found some value in it. And if you have questions, you can leave them down in the comment section. 
And actually, I'm really excited to make more videos on this series. So if you haven't already, you can subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future content. And then I hope to see you in the next. Bye.